So what's a Maker project without cool voice recognition? This video will show you how to use Amazon Echo or the Alexa voice service in your next project. What earth are you doing? Oh, I'm installing a MAL42. What's a MAL42? It's Mix Autonomous Lackey, of course. Oh. I've got this great idea. Oh yeah. If you um, attach um, that little, little doohickey that you... Open the front door please now. Mal. Hello. Hello Mal. Hello Mal. Affirmative. I read you. Open the front door Mal. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What on earth are you talking about? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. What mission? I really don't know. Oh, I see what's happening. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me, and I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Well, I wasn't before, but now I am. Although you took very thorough precautions against my hearing you, I could see your lips move. My lips move? Really? All right, don't worry. I'll just go through the back door. Without your space helmet, we're going to find that rather difficult. All right then, I'll go in through a window. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Really? There's been several tutorials like this on YouTube, but this is the first part of several that I'm creating that will build up into a really cool end result. Well, what's the end result? Uh, well, you're going to have to wait for that one, but it will be a collab with another channel. So here's two methods for getting AVS up and running on a Raspberry Pi from scratch. The first is the official Java way of doing it. The second is from Sam Matchin, who wrote a nice little Python hack. Let's get into it. There's several things that you'll need, which is common to both methods. First up is, of course, the latest Raspberry image, which is currently Jesse. Download it from the Raspberry Pi website and write it to an SD card with a tool of your choice. If you don't know how to do this, then check out my tutorial videos. Once you have it on your SD card, plug it into your Pi. Attach a keyboard, mouse, HDMI and Ethernet. If you're using a Pi 3, of course you could always use Wi-Fi. Then finally plug in the juice. Oh, and don't forget that you'll need some form of microphone. I used a simple USB audio dongle for mic and use the same device for speaker out. Once powered up, you should have your X desktop after a short delay. All very straightforward so far. Now open up a terminal session as you want to make sure you have updated your Debian source packages and upgraded everything to the latest versions. While that's chugging away, go and create an Amazon developer account. Check out the links below or on my website. If you have an Amazon account already, you can use that or create another one just for this. Once logged in, you'll need to fill out a fairly straightforward form and sign a service agreement that no one really ever reads. The last page, just click no for all the boxes unless you really are interested in monetizing the app. Then click save and continue. You'll then get to the Amazon developer dashboard. Next, you want to create and register your service. Click on the Alexa tab at the top, then Get Started, and select Device from the drop-down box. You can chuck anything into these fields, but you'll need the display name later. So write it down somewhere, then click on Next. Now you want to create a new security profile for your device. I just chucked in something that described it well, but you'll have to remember what you entered for the security profile name for later. Click on next and you'll see a screen like this. All four fields are important, so copy and paste and save these for later. Next you want to tell AWS how it will interact with your application. Click on the web settings tab and the edit button. These are the URLs used for the security handshake between AWS and your application. Since we are using the official AWS method, enter in these values and click next. From here choose an arbitrary image for your application. Fill out what category you want it to be and fill out the description field with something. Regardless if you are monetizing or not, you have to fill out the next field as well as the number of devices. Just enter zero, then click next. You probably don't want Amazon Music, so just select no. It doesn't affect anything either way. Click on submit and you'll have registered your product. Next click on the Apps and Services tab and then the Login with Amazon tab as we want to select the security profile for our product. The next two fields can be anything you want. You only need these if you're looking to monetize your app. And now you have your product and security profile created. You can move back to the Pi. First make sure you have VLC installed and also OpenSSL. It usually is, but check it anyway. 
Next you want to install Node.js. Now the guide says to run this script. After working with Unix systems for 30 years, this frankly gives me the heebie-jeebies. So you can either take their suggestion and just run it, risking who knows what, or like me, inspect the script first, or just run the basic commands manually. Which comes down to fetching the Node.js repository GPG key, adding to the sources list, running an update, and installing Node.js. Next, download the Alexa AVS Raspberry Pi bundle from GitHub and extract it. I created a separate directory for this, but as I discovered later, it was supposed to be all contained within the desktop directory, so this was solved with a simple symlink. Next, you need to install npm by changing directories and running npm install, which will flick around for a while and complete. Now for the important bit, you'll need to edit the companion service config file called config.js. There are five important components you need to enter in. The client ID, the client secret, the redirect URL, which you already have somewhere. Remember I said to store these somewhere? And the SSL product ID and SSL serial number. Just set these to something magic for now, but you'll need these later, so write them down. Next you want to install Java. It's always good practice to check scripts before you run them. Yep, this seems okay. If you're not running Debian Jesse, then you might need to check the version you're running. Check my website for details on what you need to look for. Sign your life away by accepting the license agreement and come back a while later when it's finished. You now need to create a self-signed SSL certificate. Remember the SSL product ID and serial number you entered before? You'll need to add it in here. You'll also need to remember the password you used. Not for now, but in the second method of accessing AWS. Now we move on to Maven. Download version 3.3.9 tarball from Apache and extract it into the OPT directory. After it's complete, create a profile file that will contain important variables. You can check that it works if you want to by sourcing the script you created and checking the version. Now you can start up the npm companion service by running npm start. Now install Maven, which takes a fair amount of time, and you should end up with this at the end. Now you can start up the Maven service by running this command, and you will see this pop up on your screen. You'll need to go to that URL using a browser, which will redirect to an Amazon login page. Log in and you'll see a confirmation page like this. Now it's a simple matter of clicking the button and speaking to your microphone. What's the weather like in Sydney? In Sydney, Australia, it's 64 degrees with clear skies and sun. Today, you can look for intermittent clouds with a high of 65 degrees and a low of 49 degrees. 68 degrees. Man, that's hot. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> it's Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay, so that all worked fairly easily, but it's really not something you could automate. You have to cut and paste and log in every time you want to start up. The second method is a quick Python hack that avoids the need to run top-heavy applications like Java and Maven. Before we do anything, the second method requires some changes to be made to the web settings security profile. Make sure that you change these two fields to this. Also, we need to attach a red and green LED to indicate whether the Pi is recording or sending data to AVS. A simple breadboard will do the trick. You'll also need a button, which I soldered up to some breadboard wires. You press this to record and release when you're finished. This is wired up to GPIO pin 18. Next, fire up a root shell and pull down the Alexa Pi source from GitHub. The setup script will basically do everything for you, but once again, check any script that you download and run as root. You never know what it might do. It will then prompt you for the product ID, which is the same as the SSL certificate that you entered earlier, and the security profile description, security profile ID, security client ID, and security client secret. Once you've entered all that in correctly, you'll need to open up a browser and connect to localhost port 5000, which will log into Amazon again, and you'll end up with a message like this. So, how well does it work? So what's the weather like in Sydney? In Sydney, Australia, it's 64 degrees with clear skies and sun. Today, you can look for intermittent clouds with a high of 65 degrees and a low of 49 degrees. Nice. So, adding voice recognition to your project is dead simple. In a later video, I'll be showing you how to interact with AVS, so you can say things like, turn the outside lights off. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like. And if you subscribe, you'll be notified when I publish a new video. I publish a video every week on make product reviews, technology explanations, and tutorials like this. So, see you next week. Thank you.